Now, your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, it was another cloudy, overcast day. You can see in the satellite picture there, those clouds around now. Still a little bit of rainfall out there tonight showing up. A few showers are possible, but we're expecting more widespread stuff later tomorrow. Temperatures are going to hover here into the mid-50s here for much of tonight. And look what happens during the day tomorrow. The upward trend to the 70s. We're going to really warm things up, but... We are concerned about the potential for thunderstorms tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. We are tracking the severe potential with these storms. We'll have that for you coming up. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. It has been pretty crazy uh, over the last month with people dropping stuff off here. Doing spring cleaning but have nowhere to donate your stuff? Who's still accepting and who soon will? A cease and desist order didn't stop one gym from opening today, so authorities tried to stop by instead. Gaggles of geese are a common sight at this park, but not for long. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Some businesses that normally take donations aren't open right now, but not all of them. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. A lot of you are probably taking some time during this stay-at-home order to clean out your house. Most Goodwill and Salvation Army locations are closed, but there is an organization in Champaign and Urbana that's still accepting clothing and furniture donations during this time. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen has more. It has been pretty crazy uh, over the last month with people dropping stuff off here. People are packing the parking lot of Salt and Light Grocery and Thrift Store, lining up to donate their used items. Unlike other organizations that normally accept clothes and furniture for resale, this business was given the all clear to stay open during the pandemic. What we've done is actually we've set up a contactless drive through So we have uh, boxes, large gailer boxes set up outside. They're all labeled. People can just pull through the drive through at either location and drop off the stuff and never actually have to uh, interact with anyone. Director Nathan Montgomery says they've been careful to follow the health department's safety guidelines. We have folks who are masked and all of those things that are coming out regularly and emptying the boxes, replacing them with, with, with empty ones. While Salt and Light is still off Operating their two donation sites in Champaign and Urbana, other places in this area, like the Salvation Army and Goodwill, have stayed closed for now. But that could change soon. We had originally planned to uh, reopen our Champaign and Savoy locations for drop-off donations today. Uh, but the Champaign County Department of Public Health had a couple of questions for us. Patrick Anderson with Goodwill says that's mainly to ensure the proper procedure for safe contactless intake of donations would be implemented. All the donations that we receive uh, are going to be quarantined for at least 72 hours. That all donations will be sanitized. Uh, with EPA approved uh, disinfectants. Anderson says they plan to open the stores in Champaign and Savoy as soon as the health department gives them the green light. Reporting, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Five other Goodwill donation centers in central Illinois have opened back up, including spots in Springfield and Bloomington. And one gym reopened this morning, even though it was served a cease and desist order last night. The attorney for the Zone Gym in St. Joe sent a letter to public health several days ago. He said the gym was planning to reopen if it did not take formal action against them. He says instead of a response, he and his client were met with that cease and desist last night. Shortly after the first few gym members walked in this morning, the sheriff's office and health department followed them in but came back out minutes later. It's one of the most egregious actions I've had by any of the 100 plus clients I have trying to open their businesses fairly and respectfully. Please have your state's attorney file what's called an action in quarantine. Uh, the law provides and we will be in court and the honorable court will make a decision. The Champaign County State's Attorney says that cease and desist notice was the first step and they are now working with the Public Health District on next steps. New for you tonight, Decatur City leaders are concerned about the extended timing of the governor's plan to reopen the state. So the city is working on ways to accelerate the phases to get the economy back up and running. 
Right now, we're in phase two of the five-phase plan. The earliest regions can move to phase three is at the end of this month. That allows for a wider range of businesses and activities to reopen and gatherings of 10 or fewer people to resume. Decatur leaders are now trying to figure out how the city should implement the rules of each stage. Within each of these phases, there's a little bit of room for us to interpret it locally as to how that rule or that guidance would apply here in Decatur and Macon County. And so local leaders are trying to come up with those rules uh, so that we can um, take as much advantage as possible of what, what the guidelines are. The city has not announced what the potential plans are just yet, but another area has a proposed reopening plan. Peoria's idea would separate it from the rest of the state. It's called the Heart of Illinois Implementation Plan. It puts that area into a sub-region of the governor's four regions. Officials say that area is moving faster toward recovery than what's required in the governor's current plan. Their plan was sent to the governor and public health today. And boards in two separate counties voted on reopening plans. The Effingham County Board unanimously approved a resolution to support reopening the state. It utilizes a quicker three phases of reopening compared to the governor's five. And the Shelby County Board voted to allow businesses to reopen and decide whether to require people to wear masks or not. Today was the largest single jump in COVID-related deaths in Illinois. State health officials say 192 people have died in the past 24 hours and more than 1,600 tested positive. That brings the total number of cases to nearly 85,000. In total, 3,792 people have lost their lives. Now, Illinois public health officials are working to remove any inaccurate numbers from that coronavirus death toll. The overwhelming majority of deaths reported did involve COVID-related illness. But in a very small number of cases, some people may have died for unrelated reasons and also had tested positive. So we are at IDPH trying to remove those obvious cases where the COVID diagnosis was not the reason for the cause of death. So if there was a, a, a gunshot wound, an acute gunshot wound, if there was a motor vehicle accident, we know that that was not related uh, to the COVID positive status. Dr. Azike says the virus targets the sick and elderly, especially those who have other serious underlying conditions. If a person died with cancer and COVID-19, they would be included in the COVID-19 death totals. Doctors we spoke with say that data is crucial for experts to study how the virus attacks patients. We will have more on this in a special report tomorrow night. Antibody tests are being used to learn more about COVID-19. Your blood is drawn to see if you've been infected with the virus. Campus Town Urgent Care in Champaign has been doing this testing for three weeks. If you do test positive, healthcare officials say that doesn't mean you're in the clear. You should still social distance and wear masks. In other news tonight, a Springfield man was arrested for a murder two months ago. Devion Rayford is accused of shooting and killing Gary Green Jr. Green was shot on East Spruce Street back in March. Rayford is facing several charges besides murder, including armed robbery and home invasion. Longtime Decatur radio personality has passed away. Orv Graham died yesterday at the age of 82. He's known as the voice of Decatur. Graham is also credited as being a founding father of the Decatur celebration. Many are helping each other during this pandemic, what some companies are doing for their customers. Plus, it's being called a last resort, what's been decided for the geese at this park. And the creative spark doesn't go out once people are stuck inside, how some are keeping art thriving in one city.